Welcome back to the Border Fountains YouTube channel. Some of you already know who I am, but for those of you who don't, I'm Kim, I'm Jeff's daughter, and I also work here at Border Falcons. I suppose you could say my job title is anything that involves bossing my dad around, to be fair. I'm good at it, so stick at it. I've been here about eight years, so I started when I was 20 years old. I'm now 28, quick math. Before this, though, I've always been involved with Falcons. You know, from the day I was born, I grew up helping my dad fly his Falcons, even when he was feeding his own... Even when he was feeding his own chicks, um, I would help him. It was really good to get involved with, so I really enjoyed that growing up. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to come work in here once his business was completely up and running. Um, so once I found out he was coming back over to the UK from working in Qatar, I couldn't wait. And I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere, you know, doing any other kind of job. I did do six four take my lessons of like certain subjects and i was like oh yeah maybe i want to be involved in doing history or art or something like that but i found that you know being in an enclosed space wasn't for me and the amount of freedom that comes with this job of being out in the countryside being surrounded by animals it's just it's unbeatable it really is despite having to work all the long months during breeding season 24 7 and you know not having a social life or being able to spend time with family and friends and stuff it's worth it in the end because the freedom that comes after breeding season it's amazing really is worth doing and all the hard work does pay off in this job and i couldn't imagine being anywhere else and doing this so we thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you what we do at this time of breeding season it is now solely just based on the incubation side so getting the chicks out of eggs then getting the chicks raised nice and healthy in with mothers ready to be shipped off to wherever they go. Disclaimer, this is what works for us. This is our routine with the chicks. So what works for us might not work for somebody else and their daily routine and their daily lifestyle. But this is tried and tested by us and this works an absolute treat. I'm going to feed the chicks four times a day and I'll bring you along for that. Um, these are the chicks that are in with me. So I'm the designated chick mother. So I will feed at 8am, noon, 4pm and 8pm. I don't feed during the night because in the wild the parents wouldn't feed when it was dark. So this is how I do it. Some people might not want to do it every four hours or might only want to do it three times a day. But this is what works for us. It's tried and tested and there's no need to change your routine if it's working well for you. So. So this is just minced quail, um, me being me, I forgot to take squirrels out of the frost and put through the mincer as well. So for this morning, well for today, they'll just be having minced quail. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that the mince is properly saturated. You can use bottled water or you can use um, saline water which you can get from the vets or you can get online. But for me I'm just using good old fashioned bottled water. I don't like to use any water from the tap because you don't know what type of bacteria or you know, E. coli is harbouring in the pipes or from your tap. So I just like to minimise that risk and take that risk out just by using bottled water or like I say, um, saline water. So now all I'm going to do is tip water on that. You don't want the mints to be too dry or too sticky because then it runs the risk of it getting stuck in the chick's crop. You know, you want it to be able to turn its food over really well so that it passes its mute. It doesn't get the risk of sour crop. The last thing you'd want in any bird, um, due to the fact that, you know, it will more than likely or will kill the chick. But you want to make sure that you, it's properly hydrated and saturated so that it's easier for the chick to pass through. Quite a bit of water I put on there, but it'll just soak it up. I also like to add in, this is optional, I like to put in some calcium powder. Now, you would have seen that in the other video. My dad putting calcium on a smashed up hair, squirrel, you know, whatever he, whatever he was using. So that, just basically it. That's what that looks like. I wouldn't want to eat it, but the chicks seem to like it. Now this chick's had 14 grams, which I'm satisfied with. Just basically, 
you don't want to overfill them so this, this is the crop there I just like to give it a gentle little feel don't squeeze it or anything just a little th feel to see how hard it feels and I'm satisfied with how much food is in there and that's when I know when to stop even though it's still screaming you think oh you need to give it more food if you always to give it more food it's more than like you just re keep regurgitating it and spitting food out it's only instincts now to sleep and eat so it's just gonna sit and beg for food but once I put it back in there it will settle down So with the feeding four times a day, I also like to keep a food chart, which is basically just a great, a great way of keeping like tabs on the chick. You can tell if it's going sick before it goes sick um, due to the amount of food it's eaten or not eaten. So what I'll do is the times are at the top and then each day that it's with me. So then it's got the egg number, the chick number and what identification I will give the chick, which is basically normally red head, blue head, green head, just so you don't get the chicks mixed up. Not everybody likes to keep a food chart, some people just like to feed the chicks and, you know, get the day rolling. But I find it takes an extra two seconds once you're feeding chicks just to jot down what its weight is and how much food it's had. Okay, so these are my younger chicks. Now, I keep them in a different brooder to the bigger chicks and I keep them in the grum bag over there so I keep them in there for two days just whilst they you know find their strength a bit more so they're able to move around the big brooder better and I'll just keep them in a little pot like that with the number on and once they get to about two days old I will um, put them in there so they can move around because there's bulbs right at the back of it uh, if they're too cold move towards the bulbs if they're too hot move away from the bulbs so that is actually perfect it's a convert it um, dog box or something that my dad made so it's fantastic it's the best thing ever but now I'm just going to feed these little ones I fed all the bigger ones that are in with me currently so now I'm just going to feed all the smaller ones now I like to feed four times a day now disclaimer this routine works for us border Falcons, and it's always worked for us but it might not work for somebody else you might find that it doesn't fit in with your lifestyle or your day-to-day -day routine you might only want to feed three times a day but we like to feed four times a day. So 8 a.m., noon, 4 p.m., and then 8 p.m. Now, this chick is now three days old, so it'll be going into the big brooder at some point today. Now, I like to weigh my chicks before I feed them, and then I'll weigh how much food they've had. Okay, I feel this chick should have hatched by now. So what, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a window in here and then we're going to spray it with uh, water on F10 to see if there's still blood vessels where the air cell is. Because we're not going into the egg, we're just going through the air cell. Now, I know that the air cell is here, right? And it'll, it'll come in a shape down to where its beak is there, more or less. So if we just pop in there, I know it looks a bit crude with a little screwdriver, but I find they work really well. Um, so we'll just pick a bit of that off. Okay. Now then, I'm just removing shell. I'm not busting the internal membrane. That's, that's a, another shell inside, although it's soft. If you've fried an egg, you, you know what I'm talking about. So... Um, I'm just going to make that a bit bigger because I like a big window. It does look pretty dry, doesn't it? It does look dry. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is. Okay, you see that? That's just ID on my tips of my fingers, okay? Um, I'm just going to put there a second and I'm just going to get my spray bottle. In fact, yep. There we go. So, I'll just remove that little raggy bit to make the window a little bit tighter, so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just removing that. Now, as I say, it does look a bit, uh, a bit, uh, what's the word, I'm looking for, a bit rough with a 
little screwdriver, but it is literally teeny and it works well. It works well. It works for me. Now the nuts. Looks like it's closing down. Now, what I mean by closing down, can you zoom in there? You'll be able to see little red lines now that I've wet that. And as I say, breathers, you know all this. Can't have your tea. So, but for the uninitiated, all them red blood vessels are shutting down. It's not, it's touch and go with that shut down. It's not shut down. I can see, oh, look, you get a battle from there. You can see all them red blood vessels. This chick isn't ready to come out now. There's a high probability that if I break that, take the rest of that off, take the internal membrane off, that little sucker will bleed to death. All right? So, ooh, probably still a bit yolk sac hanging out as well. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to put a bit of cling film over it. And I'll just pop myself a little hole here, but there you go. You can see a good blood vessel there. Can you see that? Right. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, this is not ready to come out, so I'm going to uh, rest easy that whatever I do, it would be too soon. So this is the chick from the egg that we were looking at last night when we thought maybe it was taking too long to hatch. Um, attached naturally itself, which is always a great, great thing to find. Um, you know, when you have to help the chick out of the egg itself, you know, you run the risk is, has it retracted its yolk sac correctly? Um, you know, is there still blood inside of the egg? So there's a lot of factors which make helping a chick out of the egg uh, a lot more difficult. But there we go, attached naturally, so we didn't have to do anything about that. So that's fantastic. So all I'm going to do with the chick that's hatched, I'm going to take some iodine on the end of a cotton bud. Get the chick, remove any of that nastiness, and I'm just gonna put iodine on its belly button like that, just to stop any bacteria getting in. And then I will weigh the chick, like so. Put a fresh bit of paper in, like so. And then I will put its egg number on, and then I'll just pop it into the, the brooder. So with the chick that I've just weighed, um, I'll now come over and hatch it on the system. We use the AIMS program, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, I mean, my dad will explain more about how to use the AIMS program and what it is and what it does. Um, but for now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and I'll come up the system and I will find the egg that the chick's just hatched out of. And then I'll put in at the top here, it says pip hatch and then I'll hatch it on the system just so that, you know, we don't end up looking for it in one of the incubators thinking we've lost an egg when it's already out of it. So I found the pipped egg, um, which is hatched. So I'll just click pip hatch at the top and then that's obviously the, this is the area where you would put in when it pipped. And then down here is the area where you put in that it's hatched. So it's hatched today, which is the 17th of May. And I will say it hatched at 9.20. And put it between 9 and 22, and it is currently in the brooder room. And we'll put it weight in. And then there's no notes, it wasn't assisted, it wasn't malpositioned, it did manage to hatch itself naturally. Now, for younger chicks, like this chick that just hatched um, not too long ago, what I will do is I will typically wait six to eight hours, depending on when my next feed lands. Um, before I give it its first few bits. Now, when I say a few bits, I will literally get the tweezers and take the tiniest, tiniest amount of food and give it maybe two to three bits of food, just so you can tell if it's mute or fine, poo, if it's passing its food through correctly and its digestion is all intact and how it should be. It's just a, it's just a way to make sure the chick's healthy um, and doing okay before you start shoveling food down its neck. Um, also, for the first couple of days that I, a chick's after attached, I'll avoid giving it bits of bone. So I'll completely avoid giving it any bits of bone and I'll just wade through the meat and make sure that it's, it's literally just meat that the chick is getting. After the first couple of days, I'll start introducing bone. It's just to make sure that it's able to pass things through correctly and nothing's going to get stuck um, 
and, and hurt the chick from the inside. So I'm now getting ready for the 12 o'clock feed. Uh, it's quarter to 12. This is how I like to prepare. I like to get the mince that I'm going to be using for this feed out of the fridge, you know, mixed in with its calcium powder and its water. I do this like 15 minutes earlier just to take any chill off the meat since it has been in the fridge. It's kind of like when we get brain freeze, I just like to bring it more to room temperature so that it's, you know, it's not as harsh on the chick's crop and stomach. For the first seven days that a chick is with me, I will feed it minced squirrel and minced quail. When the gum of the mother, I'll obviously just give the mothers the squirrel and the quail whole, obviously not minced. But when it's time for the chicks to get the identification rings on, I'll then start introducing bashed up hair. So basically we get hair and we smash all the bones up in it because hair bones are really thick and really dense. It's hard for the, the peregrine falcons, which is the mothers we use mainly, it's hard for them to break the bones up. So we do it for them, we smash it up so they get more calcium. And we start introducing that into the chick's diet. It's working really well for her. It's um, doing really good. So that's what we like to do. And that's our, you know, basic food standard or food groups that we like to use. So whilst I'm waiting for the mince to come to room temperature, I'm just going to go into the chambers and then I'm going to feed all my mothers who are currently with chicks um, just to get their feed out of the way so that I can just concentrate on the chicks that I've got inside with me. So this chick here has been in the, its first brooder, the Grumbach, for the first two days. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a colour on its head, which none of the other chicks in the big brooder have, just so I don't get them confused. Um, and then it'll go and stay in there for the next five days until it goes in with the mother. Um, obviously, like I said before, just so I don't get none of them confused. So there's no other chicks in there with black head. So now all I'm going to do, just give it a nice head. Uh, hairdo. <laughs> Got a mullet. There we go. There's this little mullet. And that's just purely so I don't get them all confused and end up mixing chicks up with another with another chick. Hi again. Um, we're just going to put some chicks back in with uh, Willow. One, he'd like to put them in in twos uh, if we can. Uh, once they got the rings on, then we'll start bunching them up. But we're fine with two chicks, um, they get great attention, they get fed, sometimes three's a crowd, one gets stuck at the back, doesn't get fed as much. So we'll stick these in now, that these are seven days, we'll nick our rubber eggs, um, I'm putting you in there, he's your tiger, and who else? Blue. Blue. Right, see the heads? They actually didn't come with the eggs that colour, they've been sharpied. So yeah, they'll stay there, they'll get tanked up for a few days before we start bunching them up into uh, bigger, bigger broods. So the uh, first chick she's seen this year and she just loves them to death. <laughs> How mint is that man? That's what you work for just to see stuff like this. The work and the that goes into getting this is incredible. Right, yeah. Okay, so you are. What's that? What's that got for you? Get in again. There you go. Sort them out. Again, another two. And then, probably next week, them and them we'll just put in. I'll be back together again. Uh, but we we'll know they're going to get well fed. Uh, over the next uh, five, six days or something, and we'll get tanked up, and that's brilliant. Okay, so it's now the 4 pm feed, and the same drill as earlier. I take the mints out of the fridge earlier just to take the chill off it. But this is the chick, if you can remember from the beginning of the video, that hatched this morning, so eight hours ago. I'm now going to give it its first bits of food, its first taste of food, 
Um, and I'll just show you how, literally, how much it is. So it's not a lot at all, because you just want to test out to say that its digestion's working as it should, everything's developed correctly whilst it's been in the egg. So, let's just give it, if you can see. Dip, dip, dip! So half asleep. Yeah, it's got the taste now. Dip! Dip! And another bit. And I will literally just leave it like that. And that'll be okay now till the next feed, which will be the 8 o'clock one. And then I'll give it about 1.5 to 2 grams of food. So there we go. And then I'll just check now, if, well, in between the 4 p.m. feed and the 8 p.m. feed to make sure that it's passing its mutes fine. So, you know... Um, make sure that it's passing them fine and everything's as it should be. Another thing that I'd like to touch on as well is making sure that the crop is empty and the chicks are ready for food at the next feed. If you keep finding that your chicks still have food in the crops, so here, if you still feel food there on the next feed and you feel, feel that quite often, then maybe adjust your feed times or give the chick a little bit less, just depending on what suits your, your day to day routine. But um, you want to make sure that there's no food left in its crop from the previous feed because then, yet again, that will run the risk of internal infections and sour crop. So I just like to make sure that it's completely empty. And sometimes there's a hard lump in the belly as well. Like here, yeah, you can feel and that just means they literally need to pass old food. But um, yeah, always check the crops to make sure that there's no food left in it from the previous feed and then adjust your feed times or your food weight accordingly. So now I need to go ring some chicks, which is basically put a new identification rings on, so you know who's who. Um, so I have X rings and W rings uh, is what we use. Obviously different size birds and different breeds of birds, you would use different size rings, but for us we use X rings and W rings. So I'm just going to go and grab my dad and then we'll go and ID some chicks. And then I'll have to figure out who gets what ring and then I'll write it down on my notes. It's now 8pm which is the last feed of the day, yes, I've even got my comfy clothes on because if you're not fast you're last and I couldn't wait to get into those because all the other jobs around the farm are completely done. The only job that we've got left to do tonight is to do some egg weighing so we're going to make a video on that um, and show you what the whole egg weighing process is so if that's something that you're going to be interested in make sure that you keep an eye out for that video going up. Same drill as all the other feeds, pretty straightforward, minces out, water completely saturated and I've also added my calcium powder now you don't have to add powders nutrients minerals whatever you want in powder form on your food um, we do and the measurements measure with your heart I suppose unless you know you're a very specific person um, so yeah that's basically it for the end of the day um, it's pretty straightforward all I hope that is you could walk away from this video and say yeah I'd be pretty confident in knowing that I can spend a day or days feeding chicks because that's what this video is about. I hope it's been insightful enough and if there's anything more you'd like to know about the actual feeding process of the chicks um, just leave a comment and let us know and I can hopefully accommodate you and answer any questions that you have about it. So let's go do the last feed then so we can pack this thing up. Okay, so this is a chick that hatched earlier and since I gave it a couple of bits of food, this is what you want to be looking for. 
so I know that it's completely fine with its digestion and it's passing its mood correctly and it's nice and healthy. So I'm just going to give it its first feed which will just be about 1.5 grams. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to anybody who took the time to watch this video. It's been really fun to make it. Feels like the days went really, really fast, but it hasn't. Um, this is just a routine of what we do, not how you should do. But if this routine works for you, then feel free to use it by all means. But don't be alarmed if it doesn't. There's plenty of other routines and ways of doing things out there. If it doesn't work for you, that's completely fine. There's plenty of breeders out there who have completely different routines to us. Um, but this is just our daily life with the chicks at this time in breeding season but if there's anything else you would like to see or you want us to do a more in-depth video on comment and let me know and we can definitely accommodate for that um, you can never ask too many questions when learning about this sort of thing the more questions asked is the more knowledge gained so please feel free to ask as many questions as you like and we'll definitely try and answer them all for you and if you could like and subscribe and even share this video amongst friends, family or people who really just enjoy this type of thing, we'd really appreciate it and that would be amazing. Um, we'll also be doing more videos on the incubation and egg weighing side of it for you. Um, so we'll try to get in as much detail in those videos for you as we possibly can. So if you just keep an eye out for those um, and we shouldn't be too far away with uploading them. So thank you very much again and have a lovely day.